Hello everybody. For some reason I thought it was time to paint another big cat and so I chose a snow leopard for today's video. I absolutely love snow leopards. They're some of the most beautiful animals on the planet. So let's talk about the drawing and the paper. You can see here I've got something a little unusual today. This is a New York Central Art Supply professional art panel and it's got a 1 and 5 8 of an inch depth to it so you can actually hang it up unframed. It's up to you if you want to finish the sides and paint them or you could, I don't know, you could do gold on the outside. You could make them really pretty however you want it. And the nice thing about this panel is that it's actually watercolor paper bonded to the surface. And I almost prefer this over watercolor ground because I'm so comfortable with watercolor paper and I understand how it handles. So when it's glued to a board, it just responds the same way as I can expect and I love that. So the paper on this board is actually the Fabriano Artistico Extra White 140 pound cold pressed. So it's the same exact paper as you would see on a pad like this. Now for the drawing, I have already printed my snow leopard in the exact eight by 10 inch size as my panel. However, instead of just tracing it on today, I wanna show you an alternate method of doing the grid, but without having all of those lines that you have to erase, because sometimes that can be annoying and they show up under your watercolor painting. In fact, it's not the best method if you're a watercolor artist because the paint is transparent and the lines show up. Works great for oil painting or acrylic or something opaque like that, but watercolor, not so much. So what I've done is I used my ruler to draw on a two inch grid. So these are all two inch squares. And this is what I'm gonna use to draw from. Over here on my panel, instead of drawing those grid lines, what I did was I took my ruler and I put little dots in the corner of every two inch square. So right here where it's two inches up, two inches across, instead of drawing lines, it's just a dot. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see that a little better. So there are my little dots representing my lines, my grid lines, without actually having them all drawn on. Now you can already see how much cleaner this is than just a grid. And so the only difficulty is that you don't have the visual of all of these lines coming across it up and down, but you do have the corners of each one for your reference points. So that's what I'm using today to do the sketch. Make sure you have your paints ready to go, but take your time on the drawing. Remember, the drawing is one of the most important parts of your watercolor painting. So I'm gonna start here in the upper left corner and just go ahead and draw the little ear on. And again, I've got my little point right here representing the corner. And although I can't see the bottom line, I can definitely imagine it. So the curve of the ear, we can just barely see it right here. There's this black shape. And of course, tilt your board to make it a little easier to see what you're doing. You've got the black tip of the ear, it curves down. Look at this negative space right here. What shape does that make? Draw that shape on your square. When you're drawing something with a grid, it's so much easier to simplify because you're just seeing one little section at a time. And I find it's a lot less stressful than trying to draw it from scratch. So there I've drawn the top of the head. Let me show you really quick how to do an eye inside of the grid shape here. I've got the four dots representing this square. And I can see that the top corner of the eye right here is almost in the dead center of the square. I think it's slightly lower. So make that tiny adjustment. And I'm gonna mark a little dot there for the inner corner of the left eye. And then I want to take note of where this little black line comes down and touches the bottom of my square. And it's a little less than a third of the way across. So right about there. So I've got the corner of the eye. I can connect that now to my little line that comes down. And then the bottom of the eye, I have to kind of just judge how far away it is from this imaginary line where my squares are connected. And then take a look at the left side of the eye. How far down does that come inside of this square? It's not quite halfway up. It's a little lower than halfway. So we're gonna mark that here and then connect that over to the eye. I continue to use this dot grid method to complete the snow leopard drawing. Whatever method you use to do your drawing, do what works best for you. There's no right or wrong way to get a drawing on. And certainly there are some days that I prefer to use the tracing method or freehand sketch it. Just remember this is your artwork and you can make it however you want. There's the finished sketch. Now the main colors I'll be using for this painting are ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. 
And when you look at the reference photo, you can see very clear, warm and cool color temperatures. And if it's not so clear to you, just take that image and fully saturate it. And then you can more clearly see where the color temperature is much warmer. That's those orange areas and cooler where you see those blue areas. That's a fun little exercise you can do if you're having a hard time seeing those subtle color temperature shifts. So I start with the wet and wet technique and I'm actually going to be mixing up a couple of colors ahead of time just so that I can fully take advantage of my timing. With the wet and wet technique it is all about timing so you have to work quickly and so pre-mixing your colors can help a lot. That top puddle up there is mostly burnt sienna with some ultramarine mixed in so it's a very warm gray. And then in the lower portion of my palette, I'll mix up a cooler gray, which has a higher ultramarine ratio and just a little bit of burnt sienna to dull it down. So those are my two colors, warm and cool. This is a new brush for me. This is a silver black velvet three quarter inch oval wash brush. And it's nice to have a really big brush to help you wet your paper faster. So I take the oval wash and I'm just taking clean water and applying it all over my entire paper, just avoiding the eyes for now. You want to make sure when you're doing wet and wet that you have a nice glossy surface and no puddles. From there, you can delicately start dropping in some color. Here I'm taking my pre-loaded size eight round brush. This one has the cooler blue gray on it and I'm using that to paint everywhere I see in the reference photo that cooler blue color. It's gonna be really light and subtle, just tinted washes for this first layer. And then I add in those warmer color temperatures and a little bit of yellow ochre as well. Even in these first layers, you can begin suggesting at fur texture. Just make sure that your washes are really light and subtle. This layering technique is a really conservative approach and it allows you to sneak up to your values with multiple layers slowly enough so that you can be confident that your colors and values will be correct. A little bit of yellow ochre on the muzzle really helps warm up those areas and a little bit of blue on the chin. With that first layer dry, I go ahead and do a second layer the same way, slowly starting to build up my values. And I'm being brave here and going a little bit darker in that area under the chin and adding some fur texture. This is negative painting around the white hairs of the chin, so it appears that there is white fur overlapping the dark fur on the chest. I'm just using that same combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, adjusting between warm and cool color temperatures just based on what I see in the reference photo. If these first layers look a little splotchy, that's okay. Most of the time your painting will go through an ugly phase. For the eyes, I'm dropping in some yellow ochre and turquoise blue to really add some vibrant pops of color to the painting and it's really helpful to get some of these dark details in with your darkest values. This can serve as a measuring stick so you can pair all of your other values later on to these darkest values and naturally your light and mid-tone values will be more accurate because you are comparing those to your blackest blacks. For the nose I used a combination of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna, watered down of course, and then I gradually add some layers to add details and subtle shading. Now, if this video is moving a little bit too fast, good news, it's available in real time. Just head over to watercolormastery.com where you can become a member of my online school. This tutorial and so many others are included in the membership. There is also a beginner course if you're brand new to watercolor and daily challenges, which are very popular. With every video, you'll see a list of supplies used in each tutorial. You'll have a reference photo and a traceable line drawing. And there's such a variety of subject matter. We have dogs, we have animals, there are portraits, birds, still life, and landscapes. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Continuing on, once I have those dark eye and mouth details in, I can be more confident with my values and start to go darker with more wet on wet layers. You can see I'm allowing my colors to be a little bit more pure now. That pure burnt sienna above the eyes and around the cheeks is really adding some vibrant hints of color. And when I mix the burnt sienna with the ultramarine, it can produce a really nice chocolatey brown, which is so useful in those shadow tones in the soft fur. I'm still sticking with my oval wash. It works really well for covering broad areas quickly. And as I continue to build up and layer, I do use a heat tool sometimes in between to help speed up the drying process so that I can just continue painting faster. Now you can see those layers are really starting to build up and we have a solid base for the spots. Once you're happy with the colors and values which serve as your base tones for the white fur, you can start doing spots. I like to do these wet on wet for the softest effect, especially in areas on the outer edges of the composition. With this painting, the focal point is of course the eyes and the nose, so anything that's close to the focal point, I'm going to use more wet and dry technique with so that it's more in focus and crisper in detail. The spots surrounding the focal point and on the outer edges of the composition can be more soft and diffused. 
I want this to mimic the way our eyes actually see things. We see the focal point in clear distinction, and then in our peripheral vision, those areas are going to be a little bit blurry. So I think a really effective painting style can mimic the way our eyes actually see these things. The spots were a lot of fun. I tried to follow my reference photo fairly closely for this. I was switching back and forth between my silver black velvet round brushes and also my oval wash to help soften some of the edges around those spots even more. And with spots, you can actually work in sections. You can just wet the area and then drop in your black color. For my black, I used a combination of indigo and burnt sienna. The whisker pads are also a necessary feature of the snow leopard, and I did use wet and dry technique for those spots so that they would be more in focus. For the fur details, I switched to my LeBenzin small brown synthetic brush. It's got a three quarter inch bristle, and I love this brush for fur texture. If you want to learn more about how I use this brush for fur, check out this video. For some final details, I added little black whiskers above the eyes, and for the white whiskers, I used my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and a small Trakel synthetic Kalinsky Sable brush. For the whiskers, try to complete them each in one swooping motion. It's helpful to practice them on a scrap piece of paper first, just to get the motion down. But there is the finished Snow Leopard. This one was so much fun to paint. And again, if you're interested, this full-length tutorial is available through my Watercolor Mastery membership. I would love to see you all there. Thanks Thanks for watching.